User-defined fields are a very important way of storing information about your contacts. Not only can you store information on any given contact, but you can also search for a list of contacts who all share common characteristics. These UDFs are retained in this user-defined field tab following window. Today in this video, I'd like to show you how easy it is to create each of the seven different kinds of user-defined fields that are available. We begin by hovering on Administration and selecting Set up user-defined fields. This takes us to the part of the Administrator module where we can modify existing fields or add new ones. In preparation for this video, I created a folder called Credit Assessment and then I inserted one of each of the seven different kinds of fields that are here. Let me talk you through each of these. I set up the folder field simply by coming up here and clicking on Folder and then giving the folder a name. The name that I gave it was Credit Assessment. After that, I began adding fields. The first field I added was an alphanumeric field. And when I brought it up, I decided I would call this Significant Considerations. Now you notice I also tagged this with 129 characters. By default, all alphanumeric fields are issued with a 29 character limit, but I recommend putting a 1 in front of that just to give yourself additional space in case there's more you want to write than what 29 characters will accommodate. And then I click Save. The next field that I created was a numeric field, and I decided to create this one and call it Current Net Worth. I also note here, you can see that it's grayed out, but whenever you create a numeric field, you have to make sure that you specify the number of decimal places you want when you create it. As you can see with this being grayed out here, you cannot come back and modify the number of decimal places you initially put into play. The next field that I created was a formula field, and I called it Realizable Net Worth. And let's take the current net worth and multiply it by some kind of a factor that represents perhaps what would be achievable if we had to recover the money that we had loaned him. In this situation with a numeric field, you'll notice that I also have the opportunity to apply the number of decimal places I want. Interestingly enough though, with this kind of a field, a formula field, I can change that decimal designation later if I want to. I also have the option to put a currency symbol in place. When I'm satisfied, I click Save, and the program calculates that field to put it in place, and we're done. The next field I set up was a date field, and I called it the date the credit app was sent. In other words, the credit application was sent to a potential customer on this particular date. And I went and clicked Save after I had named it. The next field we're going to consider is called Duration. And that's kind of brilliant, because I have this date here for when the credit application was sent out. Now I also have a field that will tell me how many days it's been since that credit application was sent out. And of course, I titled it simply like that. Then I came down to Attributes, and I had the chance to calculate this as a nearest age or an exact age. Now, nearest age is brilliant for insurance purposes, but for our purposes here, actual age is what matters, and I'm going to measure this in days, not years, months, days, and so on. I set it up just like that, and I clicked Save. Once I had this in place for the credit application, I decided I want a field where I could identify whether or not that application had been returned. So I went to Fields, and I selected a Yes-No field, which is this one right here. And it's simply application return question mark. I made this a mandatory field. And the reason I made it mandatory is because we're in the business, let's say, of granting credit. So it's important to get a credit application back. And it is absolutely mandatory to indicate whether or not that has occurred. And I went and clicked Saved after I had set it up that way. Let me just give you a thought, if you don't mind, on mandatory fields. Several years ago when we came out with mandatory fields, we had some sales managers who thought that this was brilliant because they could thereby force their staff to fill in all the information they wanted in their user-defined field structure. They quickly discovered that if people haven't got the information or can't get at it easily, it's a lot easier just to find a way to bypass that mandatory field. So I would like to suggest there's two rules you follow when you're doing mandatory. The first rule is make sure it's information you absolutely have to have. And second rule is that the information is easy to come by. If you follow those two rules, your staff will honor the mandatory fields that you require them to fill out. 
And the final field I wanted to do was what we call a table field, which is this one here, grant credit. Think of it as a pick list or a drop down list that has choices in it. So I called it grant credit question mark. I said it would be a single value. And then I also made it mandatory based on a rule. And the rule I set up was this. Take a look at the credit assessment application return folder. And if it is equal to yes, then it becomes mandatory to identify what decision has been made regarding granting credit. To set this up, all I had to do was click here and search for, get to either by using the search or finding the particular field I wanted, which was this one here is the application returned. And once I had that application returned, I said equal equal to quotation mark yes, close quotation mark, and Maximizer accepted that as the parameters to perform. Now this little guy over here, this question mark, is going to be your best friend when you start setting up formula fields and mandatory rule fields because this explains very carefully and very simply how you need to follow through and what you need to follow through to have it work for you. And then I click Save. The one remaining thing we still have to do, of course, is set up the items or the pick list that are in this table field. We do that by highlighting the field anywhere other than clicking right on the field itself, and then we slide up here and click on Items. We proceed to add these items by clicking on Add Item. The most obvious one, of course, is Yes, and we click Save. We'll add another one, No. Since it is not always a yes-no situation as to whether or not you will grant credit, we'll also add Maybe. Finally, we'll add one more item, and we'll call this one Never, and click Save. If we want to, we can reorder these a bit. We'll just put Yes up on the top. We'll put No just underneath Maybe. And we look at this. We're satisfied. It represents things the way we want them. And we click Close. At this point, I have now created all the user-defined fields that I want, one of each kind, under Credit Assessment. Let's take a look now and see how they actually work when we apply them. I'll close out of here, come back over to my address book window, and I'll pick an entry against whom I can apply these fields. I did two things to make this easier. The first thing I did was under Details, I created a key field list, and another video will show you how to do this, that I called Credit Assessment and put all of these particular factors in place. The second thing I did was took a company called Edgar Brothers and filled out some of these fields so you could see how it works. As I look at this, I notice a couple of things that should be adjusted. So I'll double click here with my left mouse button, and under Special Considerations, I might apply something here. This company is involved in heavy equipment. Has the application been returned? This time I'll say yes. And as soon as I do that and try to save, Maximizer is going to remind me that this is now a mandatory field because that is yes. And in this case, we've made our assessment. We figure they're good for it. So we'll go ahead and click yes, and then we'll go ahead and save. And now we see all of this filled out. I have this significant consideration, which was important in this case, their net worth, their realizable net worth, and so on and so forth. 37 days since the credit application was sent. And call the applicant. This came up as a date after this one here. It was a separate date field, I said. Make this field plus 30 days, that date that I call back, so that I don't accidentally let one of them go by. And this is just kind of a running total. It will continue to keep track of how many days since the application was sent. The real beauty of user-defined fields might be better understood if I give you this example. I could tell Maximizer to give me all my customers who live in such and such a city, are interested in classic automobiles, and have sufficient wherewithal to add to their collection. And Maximizer would bring those people back for me, and I could then proceed to prospect them for an additional automobile that they might want to buy. How sweet is that? Well, bye for now.